we wanted to share with you some of the recent changes that we've made to Glide Pages. Now, these changes make building your projects much quicker, more easy, more fun, and overall just add a layer of polish and kind of finesse to the user experience that I think you guys are gonna really love. We're gonna look at five areas, the new tab menu, the form wizard, three new components that we have, the data viewer, and new animations. In Pages now you'll see this new tab menu. And in here you have a bunch of different options but we'll talk about them in a minute. And I'm gonna start with this new page from data option that we have. And I'm gonna go over to the things table. Now if I create a new tab based on that data we get this uh, single collection on the screen with the ability to add items, the ability to edit items, and a search bar and a really nicely configured title component which is sort of built into the collection component. And then on the right hand side, you can see really high level controls. Now previously, if you wanted to style this list in any way, you had to go into the collection, but we've made it easy like, like in apps here, and you can configure this. And also down at the bottom, we've added a high level controls for actions. So rather than having to go into the collection and uh, manually configure different actions, you can now, you can turn these on and off just with these switches here. Now, if you know about how to configure actions, let's dive in and uh, this all makes sense to you that what this is doing on the top level is, is configuring these actions deep inside of the collection. So let me just show you how that works now. So if I go edit collection, we can configure the style of this collection more, but if I go over now to actions, we can see that we've got these sort of high level actions here where we can toggle them on and off again. We can add conditions in really, really simple ways but we can also enable advanced actions. And this is where you get back to what you had before in pages where you manually configure actions. And you'll notice now that we are back to the kind of actions that we had before. So basically this is a much easier way of getting basic collection screens with add, edit, delete functionality. Now you'll have noticed possibly something there that when I switched, you can always, by the way, you can always switch back to default actions, but I want you to look over here. So we're on the things tab here and we're inside of the collections. And if I enable advanced actions, watch what happens to this collection icon here. If I enable advanced actions, it suddenly changes. And what's happening here is this tab is changing to a custom tab. Think details, we've kind of just changed the terminology here. So if we look at the, um, if we look at this top level now, the style of this tab has gone to custom and we can change it back, right? But a custom tab, is one where you can add multiple components on it. So this is a collection screen. You can style it however you want, but it can only have one component on it. And as soon as I add another component to it, so let's say I add some rich text, you'll see that the style of this tab has now turned into a custom tab, right? If I take this away, it'll turn back to the collection tab that we had before, or I can just manually change it yourself. So this is the kind of main difference of the two types of screens that you can create, a custom page where you can add multiple components or a collection page. But the great thing is, is that you can switch them back. So if you've worked on a collection screen for a while and you've got it to the point where you want it, you've customized it in certain ways, and then you're ready to add components, you don't lose your work anymore. You can just add stuff and it'll turn into a custom tab. in the new tab menu here, we can add a new form page and or form tab. And what we can do is we can create a new table. We can choose an existing table. And when we create a new table, we can decide the name of that table. So let's say in this project, we're going to be creating just users are going to be able to submit emails to us about the project itself. So submissions, uh, this is going to be the name of the target table. I can add columns and this will be the title of the message. This could be the message itself and then maybe we want a column for the date and time it was submitted and uh, the user's email date and time and then user email if we create this form now glide is going to create a table in the data editor and it's going to create a new form screen with a form container with all of these components tied exactly to those columns so if we go to the data editor now we can see that we have a new table called the submissions table so it's a much quicker way of doing things let's just test this out i'm going to delete this date and time and email entry actually because we still have the columns uh, but now that i've deleted them it's going to add additional columns so i'm just going to add some special values here so the date and time will be the current date and time and the user email will be uh, the user's email which is this one user email address so i'm just going to say test test submit and if we go to the data editor now we have that uh, that submission so a lot quicker to create form screens 
So Pages actually only launched nine or 10 months ago. And for those of you who used it right at the beginning, you'll know that we were missing some components. We've been adding them all the time. And two of the most requested ones are the map component and the calendar component or layout. So let's have a look at how these two work. So we've recently added them. So I'm on this things tab here. I'm gonna change it back to a normal collection tab and I can switch it over now to calendar. Now we have this beautiful calendar layout where we can change between month, week, and day. And uh, I'm, we can tab between different months or days, and we can also quickly get back to today. Now the data on the right hand side just has title and description, but we need to also make sure that we have a start time and end time. So I don't have that right now, so I'm just gonna quickly add it. Great, and now that I've added those, I can set those in the calendar component. So if I add a new, I can say new event. And if I click on that event, I can go to the details screen of that event and configure it however I want, just like I would with any collection item. And it's just gonna read from the table uh, underlying it. And I can move this event around. Uh, I can make it m span multiple days. And if I switch to week view, you'll see that that's a daily event, but I can also create events that within Sorry, that's an all day event that's going across multiple days, but I can also create events that are within the day. So another day, uh, another event here. And if we go to the data editor here, we'll see that the dates and times for the start and end time are written perfectly in there for us. And we can move this around just like you would in a normal calendar. So let's have a look at the map component. Now, this is a fairly straightforward the company information on it, not that interesting. Let's make it a little bit more exciting by adding a map component and deleting this collection. So now let's make sure that this map component is reading from the company's table and that the address data is set to the address itself. And the map will auto zoom over to the, the, the widest area for all of the addresses. And if we click on one of these, we'll see a preview of that item, this really nice hover tooltip type uh, card here. And if you zoom in and out, it'll stay the same size. And if we click into it, it'll work just like a collection item. Now the, uh, the style of this, we have three different styles. There's minimal, which is this one, which I really like. The standard, which is much more similar to that that you'd be used to from Google Maps or Apple Maps or something like that. And then you also have satellite as well. There's other controls here, which you can dive into, but this is gonna make it a lot better in pages working with full screen map and, uh, and, and address data. And we added a really lovely new chart component style, radial charts. So we have bar chart, line chart, and now radial charts, which you see here on the right, showing our data in a circular format. And just like all charts, if you change the accent color of your project, we choose a really beautiful color palette based on whatever that accent color is. So making, again, design decisions really, really easy. Now, one of the things that uh, you may have noticed recently in both pages and apps is the change uh, to this area. So we have this screen area which shows us whatever the components are on our, whatever screen we're on, whether we're inside of a, a details or custom screen, whatever we are, we see the components and they change as we, as we move about. And we used to have this data tab just here, but we've moved it now to the bottom and we call this loving, lovingly the data peekaboo. So if you click around and go to different pages, you see the data for that uh, that tab or that location change. And if you click on a component that has multiple rows, you can see the data that's coming in. So whether it's through a relation or the source is a table, you can actually see that uh, data. You can, you can move those columns around just like the data editor. You can edit them, you can add new columns. And I find this incredibly useful when trying to understand a project, especially with templates or reminding myself how uh, how a project that I've built works. You kind of go to a screen, you go, okay, the, the source is the company data, and what's this collection? Okay, it's it's showing this, but some of the stuff is filtered, and it really adds to the context rather than having to switch continually back and forth between the data editor and the layout editor. So at Glide, we are a remote company. We have people all over the world, and we get together quite often usually once a quarter to work and plan together all as a whole team. But also we have these small concentrated periods where maybe two to three of us or four get together and work on something and go really deep on something. And one of those that happened recently that I want to tell you about is Gym Week, which is Johannes, Ivo and Mari, uh, our amazing designer and engineers, 
who uh, worked on pages animations, which bring an incredible layer of like finesse and just beauty to the pages product. They met up in Barcelona and worked on this stuff together. So let me take you through what they did. So this is the project that they actually built as a, as a kind of a showcase of what they did. Now, if I just move between things, and by the way, you probably would have noticed in the, in the previous part of this video, or if you've been using pages, but it's pretty subtle, so you can miss it, but it does add to an amazing uh, feeling when you're using Glide Pages. So as I move between these two pages here, you'll see this little transition happening between the fading of the screen and also the tab sort of highlight here. If I click on an item here, you'll see that modal pop up with a kind of slight fade and a slight motion in. If I add an item here, we'll, we'll see that uh, that pop up very slightly. And this sort of stuff is incredibly hard to do if you're coding this from scratch. This is uh, really hard to uh, overstate how difficult it can be to, to just get this right and nailing it. And now every single page that you create will have this built in by default. And people may not notice it, but they'll feel it in the quality of the, of the software that you create. The other thing that's uh, really cool about this is that we've got this new style. So you notice here, if we click on an item, it opens up in a modal here. If we add items, it opens up in a modal there. But if I go to this tab here and I click on an item, we have a new slide in panel, which happens, uh, which opens on the right hand side. And you can visit other screens. You have in, in modal navigation, which is really powerful here. And also if I add an item. So let me show you how that this is working. If I click out of this screen here and I go into the collections uh, action settings, you'll see that uh, the title bar action add here has the for the target this new slide in style. So this is where you configure this sort of thing if you're interested in it. It won't be de by default on sort of normal collection screens. Uh, you'll have to actually go into the collection and configure the actions target. Uh, but this is really powerful and really beautiful. Another cool thing about this is if you notice here, let me just uh, put this in uh, full screen mode. And if I move this across to the right and we get closer and closer to mobile, obviously pages are uh, responsive here. If I move this closer and closer and closer, at some point it's going to switch and we're going to now have this bottom sheet, right, which you can drag around. And I would really suggest like having a go with this on mobile because I can't show you uh, that well on, on the computer, but you can drag this in and out and throw it away. And it basically feels kind of really close to a mobile app with this added. So it's a really, really great feature. So the next time that you're checking out Glide Pages, make sure that you keep an eye out for these interactions, these animations, these transitions, and the new slide in screen, some incredible work by Evo, Maurice, and Johannes. Uh, again, that is incredibly hard to do, even if you're a very, very experienced engineer and designer. So this is now by default in all of your projects. So that's a roundup of the most recent changes for Glide Pages. You can join us at the end of the summer period for a full roundup of all things Glide, and we'll catch you then.